When we had cows on pasture, that was about five or six years ago, we had an average of 18 to 20 liters. So we have evolved. We evolved with the shed, managed to improve ventilation, improve the feeding system. We managed to install a feed mixer, a machine that allows us to mix the feed properly, finely chopped. So we managed to reach 25, 26 liters. And in the last year, we worked a lot on silage, what we would use in the diet, because we practically used silage and feed mixture. So we added hay, incorporated other ingredients, which helped a lot, especially in reproduction and now also in production. 55 meters in length and 20 meters in width, plus four meters of feed alley, and three meters of alley where the cows stay to eat with a floor. The bedding area is 15 meters wide by 55 meters long. We usually turn the bedding, sometimes up to three times a day, which greatly helped. We replenish every 21 to 25 days with a load of sawdust to facilitate fermentation and drying, because in winter it is sometimes quite complicated. There are days we cannot even turn on the fan as it ends up adding even more moisture to the bedding. Based on the silage analyses we do, we have a special feed formula prepared, which is designed according to the silage analysis, so we can achieve greater precision. Jesse sent a message saying that he won't be making videos anymore because you haven't subscribed to the Santa Fe channel. So subscribe now, and he will continue recording on farms around the world. I am Gabriel Diazaredo. I am here at our property in Broxy. We are milking 44 cows. We have an average of 40 liters per cow. Our property started with my father many years ago. It started simply with a shed, with a few cows. Milk was extracted manually. Then they managed to acquire a machine. From there, we began to evolve. We managed to build a milking parlor in 2007. Later in 2020, we managed to build a shed. Last year, we managed to build a new milking parlor. And so we continue to progress as we are able. I feed them twice a day. We manage the bedding twice a day. We also milk twice a day. We always confine the cows and feed them twice. They go twice for milking, then return. They are always loose while eating and drinking water. They go to rest on the bedding with as much comfort as we can provide. The compost barn has made things much easier for us, especially regarding time. Well-being, a lot of well-being. The cows are always doing well. They have good body condition scores. Disease problems have also decreased considerably. Mastitis has reduced a lot. Hoof problems have been controlled significantly, and we have managed to always increase comfort. We increase production. Nowadays, we see that the animals are doing well. When we arrive, we observe that the animals are calm. They eat well. They are well rested. This is good for us because we have reduced the workload. We have also managed to rest a little more, less time spent working, and we have increased production while ensuring animal welfare. We hired a company to build the structure for us. It is 55 meters long and 20 meters wide. There are an additional four meters for the feed alley and three meters for the feeding area, which is floored. The bedding area is 15 meters wide by 55 meters long. We tried to purchase the largest fans available as they have greater airflow. The fans turn on at 21 degrees Celsius when the control panel signals this temperature and turn off when it drops to 20 degrees. In winter, I usually turn the bedding manually switching the fans on for around 40 minutes to one hour to aid fermentation and drying, helping to reduce moisture. This is very helpful as our area experiences high humidity in winter with a lot of fog. Therefore, we usually turn the bedding up to three times per day, which has made a significant difference. We replenish it every 21 to 25 days. Sometimes we add a load of wood shavings to aid fermentation and improve drying, as this can be quite difficult in winter. There are days when we cannot even turn on the fans because it might introduce more humidity into the bedding. Currently, the feed is silage produced on the farm. We purchase concentrate cottonseed, hay, minerals, and barley pulp. The barley is also purchased. All these ingredients are mixed into this diet. We produce the silage and the remainders bought externally. In the past year, we have focused intensively, particularly on silage quality striving to harvest at the optimal point as we operate our own harvester. 
I managed to regulate the machine for a maximum particle size of nine millimeters and to pay special attention to grain breakage. We carefully monitor the process in order to maximize grain breakage and achieve optimal results at the feed bunk. We have been working on genetic selection since 2014 using our own semen tank. The breeding service visits us to perform the mating selection of the cows. It has now been 11 years working in this way. Every year we focus on genetic pairing, improving continuously, which has greatly benefited reproduction and solved previous issues with udder and teat conformation. Today, we have a good herd and we continually seek improvement. Regarding artificial insemination, I completed the course four years ago and now perform insemination myself. This is also important as it allows proper timing and yields significant results. When our cows were pastured about five or six years ago, our average was 18 to 20 liters. Progress was achieved incrementally. Transitioning the cows to the shed allowed us to improve ventilation and feeding. We acquired a feed mixer that ensures proper, uniform, and finely chopped mixing. This allowed us to reach 25 to 26 liters per cow. Last year, we paid close attention to silage and dietary components. As previously, we used only silage and concentrate. We introduced hay and additional ingredients, which made a significant difference, especially in production. We harvested silage at the correct point with larger particle size and a higher cutting dimension, aiming to reduce fiber concentration and enhance intake without limiting the cows. This is crucial to improve production. We also expanded our cultivated area as we had faced feed shortages for four years. At times, production was limited by this shortage and we could not exceed a certain average. By increasing our cultivated area, we greatly improved feed supply over the last year. We paid close attention during silage harvest, which had a notable impact. Based on the analyses of our silage, we request a custom feed formula tailored to the silage analysis, which enables more precise nutritional management. Today, we work with several professionals. We have breeding and genetic specialists who perform genetic pairing and recommend the best semen for our cows. Typically, we review pairings every six months, including for heifers, to ensure optimal sire selection. We also have a reproductive veterinarian, which has been crucial for our progress. He visits monthly to examine the cows and address any issues, such as silent estrus, thereby vastly improving reproductive efficiency. We work closely with nutritionists, who have been instrumental in providing a balanced diet in recent years. Our current results in production and reproduction are a direct outcome of this team effort. Without the support of this multidisciplinary team, we would not have reached our present level. Today, we make decisions based on silage analysis and milk analysis. We pay particular attention to starch, dry matter, and other diet critical points. In milk, we closely monitor urea, fat, and protein content, as these indicators reveal whether the diet is balanced or if adjustments are needed. It is through these analyses that we can make informed nutritional adjustments. Even when we started carrying out analyses, we perhaps did not have the same professional support as today. It is thanks to our team that we began conducting these analyses. Our dairy company, Lactalis, also collects two samples per month. Additionally, we conduct our own tests to verify if our diet is properly balanced. In the past, we did not perform analyses simply because we lacked the professionals we now have for reproduction, feeding, and nutrition. Today, such analyses are performed almost monthly. Here's our feed mixer, the wagon we use to feed the cows daily. Let's take a look at it. It is a highly important machine used twice a day, making a significant difference for our cow's feed management. It is a vertical wagon loaded by tractor, the tractor equipped with a bucket loads the silage and other ingredients into the wagon. Then, attached to the tractor, we set the machine to operate. It chops and mixes the silage. There is a conveyor belt on the side that distributes silage into the feed bunk for the cows to eat. We have groups of cows that are all fed the same diet. At the far end, within a 15 meter section separated by electric fencing, are the prepartum cows, which receive a special prepartum diet that is prepared separately. Lactating cows receive their specific diet as well. We separated the prepartum cows because we were experiencing considerable issues with retained placenta. Previously, cows that calved took longer to reach optimal production. Therefore, we started a prepartum protocol, which has practically eliminated retention cases. 
Now cows calve successfully and transition to milking, producing a substantial amount of milk compared to before. When there was no prepartum diet and cows were kept with the rest of the herd, we provide a special prepartum diet for them, and the results after calving are completely different from the previous approach. This is our silo, a 16-ton silo where we store the feed. The special formulation is prepared for the cows and stored here. We calculate the amount needed for the month and store it in this silo, consuming all within a month, ensuring freshness and preventing mold, which is detrimental to the cows. This is a bunker silo. The silage in use has been open for three months. We remove it with a loader, always trying not to leave excess loose silage, as exposure to air restarts fermentation and increases temperature, making the diet suboptimal. If there is excess loose silage, we immediately remove it, as well as the borders, feeding it to the calves. Bunker silage achieves good compaction, ensuring it remains firm and minimizing losses typical of silage stored directly on the ground. Currently, we harvest silage using two tractors. Here, in the silo, compaction is carried out directly on top of the silo mass. There are not two tractors here, only one. The space is too small for two. However, a single tractor is sufficient. Compaction is performed almost exclusively on top of the pile. One year ago, in May 2024, we experienced floods and heavy rainfall. Fortunately, we were not affected by flooding as we live in an elevated area. However, our fields where we had the second crop were severely impacted. We lost approximately 70%. The silage we harvested at that time was extremely problematic and of poor quality. There was a lack of quality, but we were obliged to cut it due to shortage. There was little planted area, so we harvested what was available. That silage was treated and included in the diet. As a result, we faced several issues with abortion in cows. We had cows that we could not get pregnant. Consequently, our costs increased. We were unable to maintain production due to poor quality, and we had to spend on additional supplements to compensate for the deficiencies in the silage. Today, fortunately, we were able to harvest silage of very good quality, according to the analyses. Currently, it shows 36% starch and 34% dry matter. This makes all the difference in our production process. The diet for the cows is primarily based on silage. Silage comprises the largest portion. Therefore, if we do not have good quality silage, that is what we focused on in the past year, from the choice of corn hybrid onwards. Attention at every stage is required, up to silo construction, and subsequently, opening the silo and verifying that all the care resulted in this excellent outcome. Thus, we can achieve the current productive performance. At present, the main challenge on our property has changed. Previously, our challenge was with loose cows. This was our primary concern in terms of welfare and diseases. We managed to overcome this by confining the cows. Today, we see that the trench silo we built produced positive outcomes. However, the current challenge is the terrain, which contains a considerable amount of mud. Our silos are not made of concrete. They are all covered with plastic sheeting. This is our next step. We need to make improvements in order to overcome this challenge. In the past, we used to produce silage using a different method. The trench silo was of great help to us, significantly enhancing silage quality. Previously, we did not have this level of quality, nor did we have such a good herd when we managed loose cows, compared to the results we achieve now with confinement. It is the same in relation to the silos. We improved and managed to standardize the trench silos. But the next step is to add concrete, mainly to reduce losses. Now, I will show you the milking parlor where we currently work. Initially, we operated in a simple shed, and the milking machine was installed in 2007 ours, was the first one to be installed by dairy farmers in our municipality. We built a shed without much understanding, and it did not provide appropriate working conditions. We worked under such conditions for several years, but we realized the need for change and succeeded in improving this aspect of the milking parlor. This is our new milking parlor and the separate milk room. We managed to install flooring and ceiling in the entire area. All that remains is to install the door for it to be completely enclosed. We acquired a new bulk tank and installed it in the milk room, which greatly facilitated cleaning and hygiene practices, as the milk room must always be kept clean. 
Hygiene in this area is of utmost importance. Here's our milking parlor, built during the past year. We also constructed a pit with suitable flooring, markedly improving cleaning procedures and overall working conditions. The proper height was determined, which makes our work much easier. In the previous facility, the height was not appropriate, so we had to work in cramped conditions. Now, the height is adequate, offering better conditions for both people and animals. We also built a higher roof, improving thermal comfort, so it is more pleasant inside. The summer is no longer as hot as before. Our working conditions have improved greatly, thereby enhancing our quality of life. Presently, we perform two milkings per day, in the morning and in the afternoon. We start between 5.30 and 6 a.m., and in the afternoon between 5.30 and 6 p.m. Each milking takes an average of one hour and 15 minutes to one hour and 30 minutes. We milk 44 cows using four milking units, four cows per side at a time, and then the next group of four. There are generally two people working milking in the parlor. The process takes the time I previously mentioned. We open and close the front gates, open the back, let the cows in, clean and sanitize the teats, apply the pre-dipping, use paper towels, place the milking cluster, and when finished, remove it, and then apply the post-dipping. Afterwards, the cows return to the shed, where they can lie down, drink water, or eat. We previously had challenges with our total bacterial count, TBC, when the cows were loose, mainly due to dirt and mud. We did our best, but this was a problem. Now, with the cows confined in a new milking parlor, those issues have diminished. The latest analyses show TBC between 150,000 to 200,000 CFU per milliliter, and somatic cell count SCC ranges from 200,000 to 250,000 cells per milliliter. 